starting. Now this is we're live. Now we're live. All right. Yay. Bye. Hi. Hi. Hey everyone. Hey everyone. Hey, uh, my name is <laughs> I am the uh, publisher of Universe Today, and this is your virtual star party for December fifteenth, two thousand thirteen. Just a warning. It's still awful weather for awful. everybody. We've had a whole pile of people just tell us that it's just terrible weather. So if you're living, I think they're the, faking it. They're faking like, it. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's like going to school like the week before summer break. I'm like, oh, I'm sick. <laughs> oh, but teacher. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, but we'll, we'll, we we're gonna we're gonna cobble together a ragtag crew of astronomers and uh, and their brains, and we'll see what we can come up with. So, um, so first we got uh, David. I'm clouded in Dickinson hey, hey. in Florida. You can see my scope. It's inside. You can't <laughs> see anything from in there. Yeah. Is that an X-ray telescope? <laughs> no, I can't see through the walls. I, I have I have not really seen the Geminids any of these these mornings recently. I saw a little bit Friday. Well, night. not from inside. You nope. have to go outside for that. Nope. And you need the clouds <laughs> to like part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got Mark Baird. Hey, Mark. It's been a long time. Hey guys. Yeah, it's it has been. Um, and be you're, you're going to bring us the moon, we hope, but you've got some sort of mediocre weather, right? Yeah, it's been snowing in Chicago the last couple of days, and we just got some cloud cover. Uh, but fortunately, the moon's bright enough to blow through most of it. Bad weather in Chicago? Heavens. No. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the, and of course the big problem is like you get this terrible, really bright moon, and that blows out all the rest of the telescope. So uh, yeah, so it's a it's a it's a rough night. Um, we got Roy Salisbury who is gonna, he's Hello. the one being heavily obscured by the moon's awful glow. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> but he's got some uh, he's got some hydrogen alpha stuff we'll be able to take a look at. So yay, yay. <laughs> we got Scott Lewis. God. I should unmute myself. Yes. Hello. <laughs> I'm sharing and promoting and tweeting. Keep that. Keep that up. Keeping it up. Doing the hard work over here behind the scenes. And Tom Nathy. Is that yes. right? Yes. Yep. Cool. Howdy. And I, I was just saying, like Tom's got a cool little microscope there in the background. I think that that would be, you know, we could always. Oh depend yeah, on I forgot about watch. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to dig through my. Uh, Pile of uh, dirty dishes and see if I can come up with some sort of uh, bio life form. <laughs> yeah, just dig something out of the fridge. <laughs> we'll get a look at that. So, yeah. <laughs> um, is it space or is it Tom's fridge? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So let's. Uh, so so here's what we're dealing with right here, the moon, and it's great to look at. Except you know when it's a full moon, it's all we get to look at. It's, it's right. only it's just a little over 24 hours from full right now, and this is yeah. going to be the smallest full moon of 2013 tomorrow night too. So. Oh, we might actually have somebody else join us, oh, Mr. Good. Foreman. Oh. Right on! Yay! Hey, Stuart. Evil Stuart. <laughs> Let us see your red light and your dun, microphone. Dun, Turn dun, it on. Dun, 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 dun. Well, we'll wait till he uh, well he, he joins us because we're live. Um, cool. So, Mark, what's your setup here? Uh, so right now I've I've got a uh, just a Canon DSLR on the back of my uh, Celestron C8, which so it's an eight inch uh, SCT type telescope, uh, and I'm running a long USB cable into the house because it's like ten degrees out right now. I was gonna say it must have some kind of remote setup. Yeah. yeah. Look at how fast those clouds are moving past it. That's, that's what I have back here is uh, as a SCT-8 too, so it's the same kind of scope. Yeah, I, I've got a homemade dew shield and a homemade dew heater on there, so <laughs> it'll keep it from I, frosting up. I, uh, I use it's like the second I, time I've used the dew heater, so we'll see. I actually use a hiking mat and a bungee cord to hold it onto the scope for a dew shield when I'm in the field, so it works so. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and just to let people know, uh, you know, as it gets into the middle of, of uh, December, late December, it gets harder and harder for us to kind of get everybody organized. So I think this is going to be our last star party until the new year. So we'll probably, so was that the 5th of January, probably? I think so, yes. Yeah. 5th. Yeah, so, we, so yeah, not, this week, not next week, or not a week, yeah, not for the next few weeks, and then we'll, we'll pick it back up again in the new year. So, um, and it's not because we don't love you. It's because it's a pain with all the weather and holidays yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. So we just figure we'll give give you guys a break from us for a while. 
Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. So, um, so David, where is the where did the Chinese rover land? The Chang'e three. Looking at my phases of the moon app, I can probably show you the easiest way. Landed. They didn't quite. This little indentation right here is Sinus Iridium, where they were aiming for. They landed just off to the side uh, in the northern part of the Mare of uh, in, uh, Mare of Imbrium, right here, right in this area. So I can see it in the when the clouds are parted on on the on Mark's image, actually. But yet yeah, they landed there yesterday afternoon. It's the first time the Chinese have soft landed on the moon, and it's the first soft landing that anyone's made since 1976. We've impacted things like L-Cross impacted a few years ago. Uh, the Grail missions impacted there last year after they completed their mission, but this is the first soft landing uh, since 1976. And it was kind of cool. We got no, no one really knew how much coverage. I didn't even know till tomorrow morning if the Chinese were even going to broadcast it. Uh, so we just kind of tuned into CCTV to their national English television channel and started watching, and then it popped up and they started broadcasting it. So that's really yeah. awesome. Yeah, so it was cool. They 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 had images almost immediately. Again, we were talking about before the show started. It was like when MSL landed a few years ago on Mars. We thought that we might be in a waiting pattern to find out if they'd actually made it and have to wait for a few hours, and that wasn't the case. And yesterday, it wasn't the case either. They, of course, they have a lot more in, almost instantaneous communication. Between Earth and the Moon, it's only like uh, about a one and a half second delay uh, for light travel time for the signals. So, as opposed to Mars, it's about three minutes. So. Yeah, I mean, they can literally just drive that thing by the joystick. I mean, yeah, it's, they, almost real time. Yeah, right, so. yeah. There's pretty much yeah. no delay. And yeah, when they're that's a complete difference from the way it is with the Mars. With link. Mars, yeah, you have seven minutes there and seven minutes back at the time of yeah. MSL. So we, you know, it's a whole seven minutes of terror. You have no idea yeah. what happened, yeah. and we didn't even know it was been very possible that we had to wait between eight and fourteen hours before we got an image back to even know yeah. if we landed. So that was kind of scary too. And I, I thought they were going to drive the rover off like a day later, and it's uh, they actually drove it off. I went out for lunch and came back, and they were driving it off like that afternoon, yesterday afternoon. So. Yeah, it was surprising how quickly they, they pulled the rover off the off the lander. And it sure looks like Sojourner. Like, it's such an <laughs> yeah, adorable yeah, little... Yeah, like, yeah it really like, made me yeah. sort of feel like it was it was Sojourner all over again, although you know, it's got more of these wings, more like the Opportunity and Spirit Rover. So. Yeah. Yeah. Be believe it or not, my fortune cookie from lunch yesterday said, it believe it can be done. <laughs> Which oh. <laughs> was like, ooh, I'm not superstitious or anything, but I was like, that's kind of, like, ironic. <laughs> so so now my is cool. I get to fit in with you old people now, and I have had a lunar landing since I've yeah. been alive. So I, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people on Twitter yesterday. I know Elizabeth Howell was saying this was her first lunar landing because she wasn't old enough to remember. I was like, it's like I remember the final Apollo mission. So it's like, come on, don't make us feel that old. <laughs> I, I remember watching was it Ranger Seven impacting the moon? They did that as a live broadcast. Oh, cool! Yeah, that was in the mid '60s. Yeah, yeah, it's way back. Not, 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 not to date myself or anything. <laughs> Saying you weren't at Woodstock, were you? <laughs> I, no, my, I don't think my, my my parents would have let me out the house on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's good. So, so then we've got this full image of the moon here, David. So, where would we be looking? You'd be looking. I think it's it's just on looking on my screen. I don't know if it's inverting it. It's it's kind of the center to the left. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's kind of hard to to point at it otherwise. I've got my other. I've got both maps. I've got the phases of the moon and my my old paper when I use for star parties too. It's it's kind of. So are we talking right about here? Uh, in the see. Hard to tell with the clouds. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, it's kind of like it's up in the the Mare of Imbrium. It's the the Sinus Iridium is that little notch there at the top. Uh, I can't no, really, that's, I can't that's really see on your clipboard. Mare Museum is uh, right at the very top there. Yeah, because you're, uh, right you're down by Plato, um, which, yeah. which is right above Mark's uh, uh, name there on the on the page. Yeah, down toward I I think down about where the letter M in his name is in the front is probably pretty darn close to. Mm, okay, to yeah, that's great. Very cool. Um, mm. Oh, and speaking of Phases of the Moon, uh, our Phases of the Moon app is completely free today for iPhone and iPad. So if you go to the iTunes store for the next, I don't know how many more hours, but another 24 hours, it's totally free. And we've never done this before, 
And so now's your chance. Quickly, go to iTunes, download a free copy. Or if you're cool and have an Android device, you can get it for free all the time. All the time, yeah. We always have a free version for Android. <laughs> Works on Kindle Fire. That's what yep. I like. Yeah, yeah. And the Android oh, very version cool. Is, yeah, the Android version is is better because um, it has the live wallpaper and the, right. the background, the live background. So it is nice. Yeah, on my Nexus Seven. Seven. But I did buy it because I do support you, Fraser. Well, yeah, no, it, the the free version has these pathetic ads encouraging people to uh, to buy the pro version so that we can feed our children and such. So it's, it's is that what you rely on now? That's what we do. Right yeah, you get it. Nothing new. Please support thing. Fraser's starving children. Yeah, please support our starving children. Allow it's, it's, us to, uh, to feed. You know, last time I saw your kids, they were not starving. <laughs> no, they're, they're all right. They're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's only because people have been so supportive. And it's true. Thank you, no, Google was, Play Store. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, actually. We've probably, the free version, people have downloaded, I think, a million copies of yeah. the Phases of the Moon. It's, the stats of the yeah, it's, it's outrageous. Um, uh, yeah. It's handy with, with the update that you put the lunar geography in there, and I actually do use it in the field. It's handy that it's actually giving you that live time almost like the, the illumination phase angle of the moon because other maps are kind of hard to use if you don't have that, that phase in there to actually uh, see what the illumination is. Sometimes yeah. it's hard to get your orientation when you're zoomed in. Yeah, yeah I, so free. There you go. Go grab it. Merry Christmas. Um, okay, we're going to move to Roy's view here because I know he's probably got some images stacking up behind this one. So, uh, And this is, I mean, this is what we're going to be dealing with and this is because Roy's got the, the moon that looks so nice in Mark's view is just blazing <laughs> in the sky for uh, for poor Roy. So, so what are we looking at, Roy? This is the bubble nebula. Um, I'm having a little guiding problem as well. I um, have to fix that. Um, or yeah, the but Earth the is rotating extra quickly. The Earth, yes, it is. It's I don't know what's up with that. It's lopsided <laughs> tonight. So, uh, yeah, this is done. This is a two and a half minutes through hydrogen alpha. Oh, not bad. And I notice these little, yeah, I can see like little stars flickering in the background. I don't think those are real stars either. Like, no, I think it's rendering. Yeah. Oh no, I see. Yeah, and I see some artifact in there. Yeah, some kind of artifact. Yeah, there's there's some can, there's a few artifacts in there, but uh, you, you can see the namesake of the bubble in the center though. There, yeah, the yeah, shock yeah, wave is right pushing here. out. So that's up yeah. in Cassiopeia, right? Pretty sure it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. NGC 7635. And since we're looking at this through hydrogen alpha, this is what we would see if it was in color. Let me share it real quick and resize my screen. There we go. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. You can so, see those yeah, same stars, yeah. Right, and so what Roy's looking at, he's he's narrowed everything down, what's coming into his telescope with a filter that uh, looks at a very, very small band of light, and this is hydrogen alpha, which is red, So, which is why this image here is red, because that's actually what we're seeing. Yeah, and then the uh, gas cloud, the stars that you see off to the left are actually in front of the gas stars. So it's all black and behind there. That's that's just opaque gas. And so that I mean, is it really a star that's blowing that hot star is blowing these these bubbles of gas out like this? Well, it's stellar wind that's causing it to happen. Yeah. And so I believe I'm trying to remember exactly um, what type of star it was, but I know it is stellar wind that's pushing it out. I mean, just just like any other um, type of of um, of Planetary nebula we see, yeah. you're having the you know the it's radiative good. source of actually pushing it out instead of collapsing down in itself. It's going to be something in the 20, 30 solar mass range. Probably it's pretty massive. Hey, Stuart, it's got a, a cluster for us. Uh, yeah, this is um, Caroline's Rose. Um, it is an open cluster, and like Roy, I am battling, doing battle with the moon and with clouds. So um, this is uh, two-minute exposure, uh, heavily black-clipped and noise-reduced, just to, so we can kind of see that, yay, there's stars there. <laughs> <laughs> but, yay. Um, yay, that's, 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 that's about as good I'm, I'm going to be getting tonight. I'll keep trying. And so yeah, this is Caroline's, uh, Caroline's Rose, which is for Caroline Herschel, which is the brother of William Herschel. Yeah, this is, whoops. 
Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Caroline Herschel was a, an accomplished astronomer all, all yeah, on her she, own. Yeah. She was a very prolific uh, discoverer of comets. Yeah. Um, we did a we covered an episode of of the Herschels in uh, Astronomy Cast. We covered the mission and then we covered the the family. So yeah. if you have any, it's it's a really neat story. Amazing woman. You know, at a time when when all of the scientific accomplishments really went to men, so she was you know doing was a, a really prolific astronomer. As, right. It, it, especially someone born in 1750. It's not as if it was she was born. In, in the 20th century, where you're, you know, given a little bit more leeway for being a woman, especially back then, you weren't able to do anything, yeah. you know, associated yeah. with academia. Uh, Helen Reed suggests that Roy's picture would look great with Google's auto awesome falling snow effect. Have you seen that? <laughs> <laughs> Have you put that? <laughs> I, someone should do that. That'll be awesome. Helen uh, Reed is your number one fan. Christmas lights and make them twinkle. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, I wonder what would happen if you could make it think that the stars are Christmas lights and see if it would make them twinkle. <laughs> have you seen Have you seen that as well? That people. But you know what people are gonna do? I They're gonna start putting those yeah. images in our event page. Of oh look, I took this myself, and it's just star fields twinkling. Like no, <laughs> it's all over the event page now. <laughs> oh, is it really? No, I'm just saying there would be. Yeah, it would be. I I want to see it. I want to see it all over the event page. I don't mind. I'm ignoring <laughs> the event page from now on. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Now Mark's view. Oh, check this out. Oh, go back out to the full view there, Mark. Oh, that looks, that's looking great. Yeah, it does look good. Yeah, go. there we go. There you go. The the wind, your wind blowing away machine is, yeah, your kind of working. Your weather machine is starting so, to work. So, so where exactly was that? Uh, the the Chinese lander. Yeah, the, uh, the that notch is right above the A in your name. Is probably the easiest way I could tell from this image. There, there's a notch right there. It looks like yeah. a little uh, cove there, kind of a curved. Okay. Bay. Let me see if I can uh, embiggen in that area. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost right in the middle between those two uh, little promontories there. Yeah. So yeah. there yeah, we there go. Yeah, it. there it That's, is. That is the sinus iridium right there, the Bay of yeah. Rainbows, and right up on the upper top part of that, right off there, is where they landed. So. So you said they missed their oh, landing okay. zone by a little bit. Do you know how Just, far it was compared to, you know, because I was it, when you were talking about it, I was thinking, uh, you know, the, the NASA missed the Mars landing space by, like, you know, five feet. I, I think they were still within their target box. When I saw okay. the images, they were running on CCTV, but it was on the very edge of it. So because we were discussing whether they had actually landed in the Bay of Rainbows or not, or just outside of it. And I think it was determined they landed just outside of it. But I, oh, I mean, really? Scott, we were talking about earlier, I think they were just happy. When, yeah. With your first landing, you were just <laughs> glad yeah. to hit the moon somewhere. You, you know, when you land on the moon, you're having a good day. Yeah. You know, yes. it, it, it's <laughs> like landing an aircraft. If you can walk away and from remember, it, you did good. And you remember when, <laughs> when, <laughs> Apollo, when Apollo 11 and Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed, too, they landed a bit long. Uh, because Neil was trying to find a good place. He didn't want to put them down. He saw they were like flying toward a boulder field, and he didn't want to put uh, the eagle down in the middle of a boulder field, so he kind of uh, flew along a bit until he found a nice clear patch to land. So It's okay. funny. We've gotten, uh, some people were wondering, like, the conspiracy theorists have, have already come out in oh, force. Uh, <laughs> I, was gonna, I was thinking of that haven't yesterday. haven't landed on the moon. And the, the funny thing is, is, like, well, how are they getting pictures of the rover? <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, it's done on a stage in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it, it, it's <laughs> Hollywood is much closer than Hollywood, yeah. so they went to India. That's true. That. Yeah. You know, there there is a meme going around today too. I don't know where it popped up from, but apparently people think something is happening with Earth and Comet Ison tomorrow. And it's like, yeah, like, <laughs> I just heard about that too. I don't know why. I was like, I, no, but... I, I'm going to turn yeah. into Dr. Farnsworth right now and just say I don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good news, When you, when you think you're done with these sorts of conspiracy theories, they just come on back. And yeah. So oh. here's my happy thing regarding the moon that I just found, and it makes me happy because it's cute. So there you go. Oh, cool. So Aww. Saturn and all of its moons... <laughs> 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 Moonwalking. Yeah. yeah. Aw. Isn't that cute? <laughs> uh, Roy's got to put up something new. Oh, and it okay. looks like you've got your uh, Ooh, it's a guiding, your tracking under control. Yes, it did. Uh, that is the Eastern Veil Nebula. Yeah. Oh, cool. A portion of it. A portion of it, anyways. That's really nice. Wow, a lot of good detail in that. Yeah. 
You wouldn't so even know it. that there's a blazing orb in the sky. How long of an exposure <laughs> are you doing? That is four minutes. Okay. That's pretty good. Especially, yeah, with the moon out right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we're looking at here is just a part, a tiny part of the remnant of a supernova. Because this thing is enormous in the sky. I mean, you already have a big field of view, Roy, right? And no, this not with this scope. Not with that scope? Which one are you this using scope, today? This is the 10-inch. Uh, oh, using the 10-inch. Okay. Even still, it's huge. I'm, I'm yeah. just... Yeah. Even it's with huge your on the mount, either. it's huge on the mount. It's just not huge in the sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this uh, we're looking at here is the the remnant of a supernova around five to eight thousand years ago, and it's just been slowly expanding over time. We're able to see parts of what happened with that it's just immense event. So, so my just was looking at this, Scott. Maybe you could explain it. Does this the the, the remnant that we're show, seeing here is that actually being twisted or is that just an artifact of of the imaging itself? I let me see here. Let me yeah, it, looks, it looks like a ribbon that's got a half twist in it. I don't think they're actually being twisted like we can think of. It's it's mm -hmm. gas. It's it's medium there that's being right. shot out. Yeah, and yeah. So you're gonna have ripples yeah. stuff like that just based on how much energy is being pushed out with it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it's gonna be gone. In a few more thousand years, so it's sort of a unique time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. humans keep looking at it. <laughs> yeah. You know, to the when you're sweeping along with the telescope uh, visually, you wouldn't see this at all. It's it's that faint. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this Mark's is got actually, this one of my favorite deep skies, just because it's huge and it's gorgeous when you get it in color. I'm gonna keep doing this as soon as Mark gets some clear skies. I'm just gonna go back to his moon. <laughs> it's all <laughs> spooky in December. As it leaves. Oh, that's it. You're done, Mark. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's what you get for mentioning me as soon as you come <laughs> tomorrow, over to me. Tomorrow oh, night. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh that's clear. No, no, no. Okay, so, so what, so sorry. So, David, what do people think is going to happen with Ison? I mean, we were. I, I think, I think they, they think that somehow there's still remnants that are out there that are going to impact the Earth somehow. Uh, and it's, it, you know, the remnants are going to follow the same orbital trajectory that the comet was. I mean, you know, the physics isn't going to yeah, be Yeah, physics is, has not been broken. <laughs> yeah, physics. So, so and even this though... Physics 101. This is what, not astrophysics crazy sauce. <laughs> this is... What, it's not metaphysics, no. <laughs> this is classical a, physics. Yeah, this is... it's uh, Whatever remnants are left are still going to still follow the same trajectory and, and pass. The closest that Ison was going to pass to Earth was in on Christmas Day, and it was still it was still some distance out. I think it was almost like one AU away. Uh, so Christmas it's Day? Quite, yeah. quite a ways. Yeah. Uh, in the future? There, uh, yesterday or... I don't know why I don't know why they fixated on tomorrow on December sixteenth. Okay. Oh, it, it's actually based on the Aztec calendar. Oh, oh that's oh. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the at least that's the one I saw. It was like, okay. what the heck? But I, I just saw I just saw crazy at the top and I stopped reading. So yeah, okay. So <laughs> exactly. End date on December sixteenth. It's mm. funny that they would make such a uh, close date because. It's so easy to show that it's wrong again. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 It's, uh, uh, there, there is some idea that we may get a, a meteor shower from Ison in January. I, I'm kind of skeptical about that. That's a little more grounded in science. And, and but those are actually science. alien pods. Remember, yeah, those so. aren't actually meteorites. <laughs> yeah. So. Stuart has yes. got uh, Andromeda. I do. It's just Ooh. the core of it, but. Um, That's a good. Point. Uh, this yeah, is. Yeah. A, Yes, this is a two-minute um, exposure, uh, binned uh, two by two, um, heavily noise reduced because of uh, it needed to be heavily noise reduced. Um, <laughs> but it's you a can teenager. see, yeah, cause, yeah, and so, <laughs> but you can see a little bit of detail on the arms and and obviously the core, uh, yeah. core there, yeah. I see you, two satellite galaxies in there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. Yeah, and you can see some of the clusters, some of the star clusters in the arms of the galaxy. And yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. And you've got your tracking under control too. Yeah. No, this is my my tracking's usually pretty good for you know under five minutes. So you know, and I don't do, um, I'm not doing any guiding with with these. These these are all un unguided exposures. Wow. Yeah. And Andromeda is very, very Andromeda is very nearly at the zenith right now at this time of evening and this time yes. of year. I was showing kids at a school star party Friday night. We did manage to get it, and it looked nothing. You could see the little hazy core 
from uh, from downtown Tampa. You couldn't see any of the outer extensions in the satellite galaxies or the dust lanes. So, hmm. oh, we should probably let people know how they can get a hold of us too. Uh, YouTube. So people are watching us on Google Plus or YouTube or Twitter or wherever else you're finding us. Comment on uh, on YouTube for like me the best way or the multiple events that Google Plus is creating now, we're not going to look for them. So honestly, if you go to the, to the YouTube page, it's going to be the best place for you to leave comments for us to yeah. read and reply to. And Andromeda is hitting at us too, so you can kind of imagine it's kind of <laughs> over billions of years anyway. I told you, I'm sticking around. I'm wanting to see that happen. <laughs> oh, long, long before then, Earth won't be habitable anymore, so True. we don't have to worry about it. We have, we'll have more to worry about. Before. Said, I don't want to live on this planet anymore, so I'll be <laughs> yeah, a little further maybe. off, and it'll be fine. Oh, we'll just be on Mars. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere uh, like Europa. Uh, Europa or, so, yeah. so this is a question for, for you, David, from Zakaria Haji on uh, YouTube. I see white spots on the moon. What are the white spots on the moon? Th those, are, those are craters that just the, the albedo and the reflectivity. We get the ejecta blanket from the impact material. It's spread out. Right now, the sun is almost like directly overhead from those points, so we're getting uh, a reflection, like an optimal reflection of light right back. Right. So they, they, uh, there's a few craters that actually do have a very high albedo compared to surrounding planes, albedo being how much light they reflect back. The moon is actually a very dim, it seems very brilliant white, but the moon actually has a reflectivity of about 10 to 12 percent, which is yeah. like the equivalent of, like if you go outside, it's like worn asphalt has about the same reflectivity. The well, see, there's this video that was just put up on the Universe Today <laughs> channel that talks all about this. Yeah, oh, I know. Know. why does the moon shine? <laughs> yeah. yeah, with yeah. Scott Lewis. Yeah. With Scott Lewis yeah. and Thad Zabo. And Dr. Thad Zabo from yeah. the Virtual Star yeah. Party, yeah. Yeah, the, the astronauts, when they came back, uh, they said that it actually looks more like, like uh, coal, kind of, uh, the surface of it, like coal dust, than it, than it does up close, than it does pearly white, like what we see. And I'm sure yeah. that had to be so weird to them because it's something yeah. that we see all the time is this silver-like disc that's in the sky. And yeah. when you land on it and it looks like you're on a really badly paved road in Michigan, <laughs> what's going you know, on? I, I realized when they started showing the pictures from the Chinese rovers, I was like, you know, it has been a long time since we've been on the surface of the moon because I, I'm almost used to seeing a rover on a red landscape or a brownish right. landscape. It just, <laughs> it just, that's so true. It yeah, just boy, looks yeah. Kind of, yeah. That's so funny, it, yeah. It, I'm, it, I'm looking it, at some pictures right now of the uh, of the lander, and yeah, it's it's yeah. crazy. It looks wrong. Yeah. We're, we're just, yeah, it looks like something's wrong with the image. Just Here, I'm going to share. Yeah, share that. That'd be yeah. awesome. Hey, Mark, if you get a chance, how's to uh, aim your telescope a little more to the right over to Tycho? Well, you can get the whole thing, so... Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, 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 can, I can do that. Okay, okay appreciate me, that. Thank you. Tycho's a creator. Whoops. Tycho. <laughs> Tycho. Yeah. The guy with a silver nose. Tycho yeah. Brahe. We just passed his birthday this weekend, as a matter of fact. So oh, really? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, so there's the rover. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Look at the little guy. He's so shiny. Yeah. He's shiny and <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing yeah. donuts. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you? Well, I would. But look at that. I mean, look at that soil. I mean, it's exactly that 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 asphalt coloring. Mm -hmm. That's exactly mm -hmm. what you're seeing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then all those chunks of rock. You know, I mean, the lunar surface has just been pounded and pounded over billions of years by all of these meteorite impacts, and so this is just churned up rock rubble uh, debris with and then all of this the dust is just more you know fragments and fractured micrometeorites it's, it's amazing well, since there's not enough it. you know there's not enough mass there to have gravity to keep an atmosphere going on so there's no wind yeah. that's blowing anything around there's no erosion from from any air yeah. and so everything is pretty much pristine where it lands the erosion is rock slamming into right. the, yeah. the surface <laughs> of the moon the, the rover has a. It's gonna get oh, people is this is uh, high def, this high definition photo. Now they're gonna think that the the moon landing was really faked because they just aren't to the pictures. <laughs> yeah. 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 The <laughs> rover has a hybrid. Uh, it's solar powered, but it also has a plutonium power source to get it through the two weeks long nighttime on the moon right. as well. Yeah. But it it doesn't have an RTG, right? I, I think it's some variant of an of a of an RTG, but it's it's a lot smaller and in, in than what uh, Mars Curiosity has on it. Right. Yeah, Mars has plutonium uh, marshmallows. They're really yes. cool. <laughs> They're really cool. 
So his curiosity, like, tweeted, you know, hey, congratulations, China, you're on the moon. That's nice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, actually, Laddie needs to tweet saying... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Lad <laughs> yeah, Laddie was going to try to observe uh, what it's going to do to the local dust environment so after the rovers yeah. landed there. So oh, I haven't seen cool any fish. data come off that. There was an animation that came up. Uh, Emily Lactuola had it on her, on her site there of the of the rover actually coming off the there. It looks it looks like it, the the dust looks pretty deep there actually from the track. I was that noticing came. that. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty funny when they were first setting up their their missions to to the moon. They weren't sure that that it would be safe to actually walk yeah. on the surface of the moon. They didn't know that whether or not you would sink down into this moon dust, this powdery moon dust. So, well, you notice when Armstrong first went down the ladder, the first thing he had to do was make sure he could hop back up on the ladder again because if you couldn't get back up, you wouldn't you'd be stranded on the moon. So. Yeah. That was one of the first things they tested although, before he got although off. Although, I think that's the way that I want to die. I want to be stranded <laughs> on the moon. Stranded on the moon. Well, yeah. Have you ever read that uh, that letter that President Nixon had written? Yeah. For the, for the astronauts? And so he had, yeah. he had written, or someone had written a letter for him to read to the astronauts because if, they, if there was some problem they couldn't get off the moon, he would have to thank them for their valor and s say goodbye. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting in that rover photo you showed too that I could see the sun angle. You could kind of see how the sun has just risen in that location where they, because the, the, the shadow angle is pretty steep. So you can mm -hmm. tell looking at that and looking at the moon now how it's right along the Terminator, how that sinus uh, region is right on the Terminator. You can kind of see the confirmation of that. Really cool. Okay. Oh, uh, got and actually, Lori Pierce is asking, how long is it supposed to be performing on the moon? Do you know, David? I think it's. I think it's a. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, think, I, don't I, I thought know. I heard it was a two-year, a two-year mission, but we've we've Ken Creamer has been reporting nonstop on Universe Today about the about the rover. So we got tons of stories. So he just he's been updating it like mad. He did. I think he posted three stories just today about it. So he's been all over the story. So definitely check out Universe Today if you're if you're interested. Um, I don't know if he says. Oh, there's more pictures here. God, this is so nice. Except he's saving his photos. The, the rover's God. name is U2, by the way, which it translates into Jade Rabbit in English. <laughs> Jade Rabbit. <laughs> is there any significance for that, or I believe something? there there may be. I think I think it has to do. I think there's something in Chinese yeah. mythology that, okay. that it does tie into with uh, with their their stories of the moon and in the uh, what they yeah they. they so I think a, they had a contest uh, for the population, of Chinese population. It was like, okay, here's a list of names. What do you want to call it? Oh, that the, there's a lander. That was really cool. Can you put that back up? Um, do it now. Hold on, I have to. I have my children are stomping around. Give me one second. Because. Right. I, I liked how it showed you. Know, it shows the lander, but it shows it just strolled on off. Like, hey, what's up, guys? I'm here. <laughs> well, I like how they had the like a little elevator system rolls off the the lander and then it, it lowers itself onto the surface. Right. I mean, it's nothing as cool as Curiosity, where it. Oh, know, it's kind of cool. Just, I love yeah, that. It, it parachuted in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know the 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 Soviet the Lunokhods. Uh, they were, they were very advanced. They used the, they were the first ones to use the balloon impact thing that the uh, uh, opportunity used. Interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I didn't either. Um, uh, PBS Nova, when they were doing the thing on the uh, op uh, uh, opportunity and, and such, they had, um, they talked about it briefly, and I had to research it. Uh, on there and yeah, they the 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 Soviets actually did the uh, 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 airbag thing. You know, a lot of people don't realize we haven't landed on the far side of the moon or the poles. We've only landed on the near side. It's just easier to operate yeah. on the near side because you have constant communication. But right. yeah, well, and the I Apollo the, the airbags is my least favorite landing way. I mean, honestly, it's just like yeah, we're just gonna wrap it in a bubble and throw it at the surface or something, and hopefully it survives. <laughs> and that's the big reason why Curiosity didn't do that is because it's too massive. So yeah, they had yeah. to read it. You know, they had to find a new way of doing it. 
Oh, the oh, sky so, crane. Yeah, that was so awesome. Our good friend uh, Ciro Villa, 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 um, who I should join see. us sometime, Ciro. You should yeah. come into the star party sometime. Yeah. Um, said tinfoilers info, comet oh, ice, Trinity, Mayan Tzolkin. Uh, <laughs> the gist is that the, they calculated the Mayan calendar wrong, and not December, not <laughs> yeah. December two thousand and twelve, but December sixteenth two thousand and thirteen, which I believe was an episode of The Simpsons as well, where Homer. <laughs> Uh, calculated into the apocalypse, and then he was they got it wrong, and then and it turned out that he was right on his next time, and he got uh, everyone else got left below, left behind, left yeah. below. It's yeah, just yeah. yeah, it's just yeah. a grab. It's just but, a grab for SEO, basically. Well, actually, what they should have done is Fraser, you could have you could have been on another uh, cruise right a now. Cruise, yeah, exactly. There you go. You yeah. should have capitalized yeah. on this. Uh, I'm gonna go see what Stuart's got. Stuart, what have you got? Um, you unmute. Uh, this is half the double cluster. So this is the the one half over one half times double. Would cluster. that be the single that, cluster? That would be the single cluster. That uh, this second one is off the field of view because my camera is not oriented right. But um, this? Uh, it's it, it is what it is. It, it is what yeah. I got. <laughs> this one is a good binocular target too. Yes. Yeah. This is right, it's, right between. It's, yeah, it's just a little too big for my scope. Yeah, yeah, it's right between Cassiopeia and Perseus, and it's uh, right on the galactic plane too. So I, I was showing this one off at a star party Friday night as well. I, I can. This is one of the few that you can get from downtown pretty easily, and, uh, and you can aim at, and it looks pretty cool. Wow, uh, Paul Hutchinson's been posting some just amazing pictures over on the event page on on Google Plus if you have time. But Paul, can we see one with snow? That would be great. Um, okay. And here's the wiki version here where you're able to see both of them. It, are you, You're you using your flea now, right, Stu? You're not using your DSLR? N uh, no, I don't have a flea. I have a QSI 683. Oh, QSI. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's, okay. it's, it's, got, it's got the 8300 uh, chip in it. Oh. I miss uh, your okay, color so shots. Boy. I have to say that. What have you got, Roy? That is the Cocoon Nebula. Oh! There we go. Looks like a heart. I was almost going to say the crab. You know, it just looked weird. Or the Trifid. Yeah. Squished. Yeah, yeah tr Trifid was my guess, too. Cause the Cocoon Nebula always looks like it's out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. It's just blurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, you can definitely see those stars are in focus, so... Yeah, I focused right before it. Well, you're looking at a process image of this. I can kind of see why it look out. It will look blurry. Um, so I mean, we're looking at only the reds here. So you're seeing it kind of diffusing in with the blue. Yeah. So yeah, it would look slightly out of focus with yours. But look at that the yeah. sort of dark nebulosity around it as well, in the one that Scott's got. Like that's actually obscuring the background, right? Yeah, yeah that's, right. that's one of the Bernard uh, Dark Nebula. Whoa, oh, cool. one of the evil Dark Nebula. Okay. Yeah. Mark, Mark, you look like you were zoomed in on uh, See Your Turn Quality there for a moment. Oh, let's check it out. No, oh, my God, I can zoom back. Uh, Brenda Shaw is wondering, where are we supposed to go to chat now? It's not posting to this <laughs> page anymore, right? It is. Yeah, right I was now. able to see it, so... Um, Unfortunately, we are sort of caught in between times again where the chat system is really hard to manage again. Right. And so just chat wherever you want. and uh, <laughs> We'll try we to find the, it. We will try to find it. The most but consistent the, way is YouTube. But yeah, yeah either on YouTube or on the event page. Like if you chat on those two locations, we're most likely to see it. Right. So. Um, yeah, that's the tranquility there. Yeah, yeah, that is right off to the left on the image there. There's, there's a get that little promontory point. There, there's a bright crater there, and I know right near there, there's like a doublet of craters called Sabine Crater, and it's, it's in, in that general region where they landed. They actually landed yeah. in a very geologically boring area, so they, for the very first landing. Yeah. Well, they, that's exactly what the Chinese did. They just picked an area that was they, really safe to get to. Yeah, you, you, you're always like the, the engineers want to land in the safe places, and the scientists want to land in the interesting places. Right. And you kind of find a <laughs> compromise between the two. Well, that's the other one with the uh, the Chinese. Uh, you know, they had to have some sort of guidance 
for fine tuning that because they landed off like close to a crater there. Yeah, they did. Yeah, it was interesting to watch the little descent video they stitched together. You could actually follow it right yeah. through pitching over and landing. It was kind of nifty. Mm-hmm. Uh, see if I can find that video real quick. In, in considering a lot of their space program kind of happens still in relative secret, they were pretty open with this one. I thought it was kind of cool. It's, well, uh, they had like five separate... Uh, camera points of view on the lander and on the rover that they were able to yeah. broadcast. Yeah. yeah. So they, you know, they landed five high definition cameras on the moon yeah. to give tons of different perspectives. This is great. Oh. So what do you, what do you guys think? I mean, Dave, what do you think about like next up humans, right? That would be great. I, I, I think it would be great if we could go back to the moon. There's, like I said, there's still some places we haven't explored, like around the poles and the far side, and you know, it's. Uh, and you're a little closer home than Mars, I think it would be a good test bed for a colony, uh, just because if something happens, you, you can get home from the moon a lot quicker than you can from Mars. Yeah, I mean, so, think yeah. about this, right? I mean, the Chinese have done humans in space. Then they've built, you know, multiple times. they built a space station. Now they've sent a lander to the moon. Yeah. I mean, you can see where this is going. And their, mean, their, they, lander, their lander looked a lot like the lower descent stage for the LEM, too. I thought it was interesting that... Uh, you know, I, I've heard rumors that, that beefing that up may be the next step for a, a manned lander for them. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, what it's going to be is when China cl uh, cashes in on America's debt, they're going to ship us all to the moon <laughs> to mine the moon. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen. Uh, Alan Davidson posted a pretty interesting theory, which I kind of, I was, I thought this as well, which is that we Westerners see the patterns of light and dark on the moon as the man on the moon, whereas the Chinese people see it as the rabbit on the moon. Yeah, there are right. no different cultures have different myths about what those dark and light patterns yeah. are. Yeah, and so maybe that's where the jade rabbit comes from, is the, is that could the, be. the rabbit on the moon. That could be, yeah. A right, weird they were the holes for the speculating. Species. It's Alan's idea, not ours. Yeah, Alan. Yeah. Um, hey, Phrase, this may be my last one. It's really clouding up here. So Yeah, well, we're um, running out of time anyway. Yeah, anyway. I mean, okay. So yeah. this is I, – I have I have Pac-Man here. Oh, great. So um, Paul Hutchinson recommended the owl cluster in Cassiopeia, which I know is pretty close to where Roy is operating, so – but. No nice. pressure, Roy. Yeah, I'm right in the middle of another one. This is the Waka Waka. <laughs> this um, this image that I have up here is actually a first for me in the VSP, so I just wanted to do a shout-out to Roy here, who um, – uh, has inspired me to do some HA. So this is a four-minute hydrogen alpha um, exposure of the Pac-Man Nebula. Still really noisy, but um, first time I've ever done HA in um, in the VSP. Nice work. Pretty cool. That's great. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I, go ahead. Oh, I was, did Roy? You had one more image, or? Yeah, I still got about a hundred seconds on it, so. Okay, all right. Well, I think we'll... Still well why don't we start to wrap things up and we'll sort of go with Roy, with Mark's view of the moon here and then uh, as we start to wrap things up. You can really see on the craters that, that, that ring around the craters, that white... Yeah, and so some of those craters are actually... Um, I know Aristarchus and uh, Proclus are actually uh, craters that are known for uh, transient lunar phenomena over the year where people have seen, like, spurious brightening on those craters. And a lot of it, I think, is just an optical illusion, but it's kind of... Uh, it's it's interesting that a lot of them do appear a lot whiter when, when you get that full-on illumination out there. Yeah. These are things that observers have just reported over the years. Yeah, well, also, in the, the whiter craters are usually newer... Yeah, you know the, the the rims and such like that. That's newer ejecta that hasn't weathered yet. Yeah, or aged. Yeah, tomorrow night's full moon is also the visually smallest full moon of 2013. Just kind of something neat. Hmm. Yeah, so it's it's an anti super moon. <laughs> it's an a little anti super moon. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like we, we don't we, uh, the the smallest moon has a PR problem because it's it doesn't get all the the Google hits that that the super moon does every year. Yeah. So. So, so what do you call it? We got to have a name for this. The the, the mini moon. The mini moon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, it's and like actually, a diet Coke of yeah. moon. We we actually have two mini moons in a row because tomorrow night's is the smallest of 2013. Then the full moon in January is the smallest of 2014. That's just because the moon happens to be very near apogee at at the time that it's reaching full. So, oh, oh. Fraser, uh, check the check the event page. Helen Reed has fulfilled your request. Oh, good. Nice. <laughs> What, oh, what, is, awesome. what does she do? What does she do? Oh, I get to show right. it. It looks like just what Mark probably would be seeing. Yeah, she took Paul Hutchinson's photo, is what it looks like, yeah. and added and auto awesomed it with some snow. So it's snowing oh, on the moon. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 I get to share it. I Way to go, Helen. That is that is fantastic. Here, let me see if I can share this quickly. I love it. Uh, I'll do this one here. If you could see this, you see that? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's awesome, Helen. Thank you so much. That's that's exactly what I wanted to see. Paul and Helen, uh, a great collaboration. <laughs> that's excellent. And that's it. Don't. And no one else get any ideas on the event page. I will delete them faster than anyone. <laughs> Oh, man, I love it. Uh, cool. Okay, so, um, well, we should probably start wrapping this up then. Uh, so, David Dickinson, thank you very much for coming. Uh, sorry, no problem. Sorry you had clear, cloudy skies, but... Uh, These are early enough that we can participate on the East Coast now, so I definitely try to join in if I can. Yeah. Mark, that was great. It's great to see you again. And, uh, and uh, again, that too. beautiful view of the moon. I love it. And I know this is like a tiny little sliver of partially cloudy until the... Horrible yeah. Chicago weather sets back in again. So well, I, I went out last weekend when it was like two degrees out, just just because I hadn't been out for a while. So I, I don't mind the cold. It's just you know the clouds are. Kind of I remember bad. doing that in you Alaska. Got your, yeah. You got your you got your winter coat on. You're all right. Yeah, that's right. yeah exactly. <laughs> your undercoat's growing in. <laughs> Roy, thank you very much. Oh, if you if you find if you get that last picture, definitely put it up. But it's downloading. All right, Scott. Hey, I will try to. Uh, let's see. Coming up, um, we have our beginner's guide uh, to buying a telescope this Wednesday with Tony Darnell and I. So and we will, and Stu and yeah, Gary. Yeah, I think I can join in on that. And yeah. I think Peter as well. And yeah, yeah David. So yeah. we're going to be uh, responding to the ever question that we get all the time: is which telescope should I buy? Which we get all the time. So yeah, you don't, really... you don't want to buy Peter's telescope, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you do. You just yeah. need to have 30 grand. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so just, we'll just, be helping just don't some... tell the spouse. Right. Yeah. So we'll be getting some tips and tricks and uh, some pitfalls to avoid when it comes cool. to making the plunge. All right. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, Stuart, con congratulations on your first Pac Man. Many awesome. More Thank you. All right. Tom, thanks again for joining yes, us. Thank you. Bring in the knowledge and the experience with lunar landings. <laughs> well, I've been around. <laughs> cool. Okay, so just one last reminder. If you haven't already, our Phases of the Moon app, totally free on on iOS. So go go to the, uh, the iTunes store, and you can just download a copy of it right now, free. Um, this is going to be the last virtual star party we're going to do in 2013. So if we don't see you in other things we're doing, everybody have a great... Christmas, Christmas, Festivus, Christmas. all of that stuff, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. and we'll see you all in the in the new year. So okay. thanks, everyone. Night, all. Bye. Bye. Oh, there it is. There's Roy's picture. Done. Yeah, that's the, cool. The wizard. Cave Nebula. Cave. Cave. Awesome. cave. Oh, oh, very okay. cool. All right, on that the wizard's in the cave. He's hiding. <laughs> I, have an, I have another one going, but it'll take about fifty seconds. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna shut it down. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks everyone. Really good. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Night, See you next Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>